What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and with the release of iOS 9 yesterday, there's been a huge state of confusion. A lot of people are asking me, should I update to iOS 9? Is it gonna make my phone slow? Is it gonna make it faster? What's gonna happen? Well, with this video, I wanna answer all of those questions, and this is actually a pretty ambitious video I'm trying. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how iOS 9 compares to iOS 8. Now, this being the latest stable version of iOS 8, being 8.3, and iOS 9 beta 1. Of course, these results are subject to change, but in this video, I'm going to be comparing speed, I'm going to be comparing battery life, as well as Wi Fi performance, and I want to see if the storage did indeed improve. And I'm going to be seeing how the temperature has changed because reportedly a lot of people have seen temperature changes between these firmwares. So I've got a little laser gun over there for that, and I'm going to be performing these tests on every single iPhone processor. So starting with a 4S, 5, 5S, and an iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, which run the same processors. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. All right, now first things first, before I get into the speed, I wanna see if Apple made true on their promises for improved battery life and storage. So Apple did say that the actual file system size would be reduced from 4.6 gigabytes to 1.3 on the larger devices, but I wanna see how it improved on older ones as well. And I did run battery tests on most of these devices, so I can give you a little bit of an answer there too. All right, so let me go ahead and show you on my iPhone 4S, the beginning storage, and where it ended up. Here was the beginning. It was 11.1 .1 available on iOS 8.3. After updating, it actually consumed even more. So it reduced my storage size to 10.6 gigabytes available. Now on my iPhone 5, let's see where that left us. So I started with 55.7 gigabytes on 8.3 and I ended up with 54.4. So that actually shrunk as well. So that's another gig.3 that disappeared. I mean, that's the opposite of adding storage. But on the larger devices, I noticed there was a little bit of an improvement. So on the, my 5S, I started with 53.6 gigabytes. And after updating, I got 54.4. So a little bit less than one gigabytes was added through the iOS 9 update on my iPhone 5S. Now on the 6 Plus, I actually started with 52.3 gigabytes on iOS 8.3, ended up with 54.1. So almost two gigs of added memory. So for some reason, and it's been reversed on older devices iOS 9 takes more storage right now, but on newer ones, 5S and above, it adds storage. So interesting. So when it comes to battery life, iOS 8.4 was a little bit worse than iOS 9. I got a few more minutes of runtime, actually about one minute out of iOS 9 on my iPhone 4S. So not much of an improvement there. On my iPhone 5 on iOS 9, the battery life was a little bit worse. So it wasn't an improvement at all. And unfortunately, I cannot show you on my newer devices. Geekbench crashed on iOS 9 on both devices, so I was unable to get a result, but it appears that the battery life is better on newer devices, and I'll have a follow-up for this in the final test. So here's the startup on the 4S, iOS 9 on the right. Three, two, one. So it looks like iOS 8.3 is up and running first. iOS 9, I've noticed, takes a while. I mean, it hangs, so let's go ahead and see uh, how much longer this is going to take. Wow, I did not expect this much of a difference. How much more does it possibly have to load? Man, I'm going to time it next round. That's crazy. I didn't think it would take this long, but there you go. So uh, there is quite a difference there. Wow. On the iPhone 5, starting in 3, 2, 1. And we're off. So iOS 8.3 is on. Let's see. Oh, so about four seconds faster than iOS 9. Still a delay even on the iPhone 5. Start up on the iPhone 5S in 3, 2, 1. And on this one, it looks like iOS 9 was just a tad bit faster. Failed there, but with iOS 9 ahead, maybe half a second to a second. That's more like it. iPhone 6 Plus in 3, 2, 1. All right, looks like iOS 9 is first, about two seconds faster than iOS 8.3. So it looks like the newer the device is, the better it's gonna run it so far. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and launch some apps and see which one it's quicker on. iOS 9 is on the right of all of these devices. All right, so 4S, let's launch the App Store iOS 9, looks like it loaded a couple seconds faster there. Weather. So it looks like it's loaded and usable a couple seconds faster. Let's try it on the 5. So 8.3 was faster here. iOS 9.0 on this guy. 
So actually it looks like it was faster on 8.3. All right, on iPhone 5S, let's go ahead and load the App Store. I was 8.3, tad bit faster. 8.3 was a little bit faster. Looks like 8.3 is faster than iOS 9 on the 5S. Let's go ahead and see the 6 Plus. Looks like iOS 9 was a tad bit faster. iOS 8.3. iOS 9, wow. So looks like speed wise, I'm getting very similar results. Uh, in most cases, iOS 9 is a little bit faster. And the reason it's not always is because optimization. You know, Apple, it's beta one, so it's not really a fair test in the first place, but overall it is looking good, right? So unfortunately my plans keep getting foiled. No speed test supports iOS 9 yet, but I did get an HTML5 performance test on html5test.com. It looks like iOS 9 does a much better job of supporting HTML5. Now, whether or not this incremental difference will make a difference in browsing, who knows? But for now, iOS 9 is looking good in terms of support for HTML5. And I'm just going to do a quick browser performance test. So I'm going to load Reddit on all of these devices, starting with the uh, 6 Plus. iOS 9, a little bit quicker there. Try it on the 5. So again, a little bit quicker on iOS 9 iOS 8.3 was a little bit faster on the 4S. Looks like iOS 8.3 was just a tad bit faster. Overall performance is looking good. On older your devices, looks like iOS 9 actually makes performance just a little bit worse. And that proves true for system animations as well. They're a little bit choppier on older devices, but there is a definite improvement on newer ones. So at this point in time, I really wouldn't recommend upgrading to iOS 9 on a 4S or an iPhone 5. But if you have a 5S or above, you know, go for it. It will improve the performance as well as the storage required will go down. But there's one last thing. I want to test the heat you know the heat production of the firmware because a lot of people especially on the 6 plus have been telling me you know the heat it's a lot warmer in iOS 9 so I've got a meter here and I'm gonna go ahead and test the heat so while downloading a large game I'm gonna go ahead and point this at the iOS 8.3 device man it looks like I have 94 degrees definitely an increase and I can feel it I mean these devices are a lot warmer um, so there's definitely about two degree difference but when you start using it, you know, get into more intensive applications, then you will definitely notice a difference. I actually measured it once, uh, 87 on this guy, and it was like 96 on the iPhone 6 Plus on iOS 9, and it's kind of ridiculous. Look at that, it's almost 98 degrees, uh, 97. So definitely a difference there, about two degrees, two and a half. So guys, basically what these tests can tell us is don't update to iOS 9 just yet. It's just not that good for older devices. For newer ones, it, there is a slight improvement, but in terms of stability, you know, it's just not there. I could run it as a daily firmware, but I wouldn't recommend it just yet. You know, try it, install it. If you don't like it, you can always downgrade it. And I'll have a video for that very soon. But overall, iOS 9 runs warmer. Uh, it doesn't always add storage to your device and it's not always faster. So hopefully the final version will be a little bit better, but for now it's not ready for prime time just yet. Anyways, thanks for watching this video guys. Hope you enjoyed, you know, just comparing iOS 9 to iOS 8.3. Again, hopefully it gets better in the future, but for now it's just not there yet on older devices. Newer devices, it does get a little bit better. If you guys want to install it, it's super simple and you can always go back to an older firmware. So don't even worry about that. And I do have videos for how to install it on my channel. So have a great day guys. Peace.